And we can now move to the final act for today. And that's uh, done by Mirko, who will uh, tell us about Eugen's analysis of expectations. So please, Mirko. Yes, mm, thank you, Eichel. Well, um, the starting point of my speech is the problem of points, which is discussed by Pascal and Fermat in their correspondence on probability. Uh, we have already seen this problem in the first um, in the first speech uh, in, uh, to, today in the morning. Um, there are uh, many possible uh, for, uh, for formulation uh, of this problem, but I chose uh, probably uh, the simplest one. There are two players, A and B, who are playing a game. They decided that the first player who wins three rounds will win the game. Um, at uh, uh, a certain moment, A and B decide to stop the game, um, when A has already won two rounds, while B only won. The question of this problem is to, um, to um, is connected to uh, the way in which the stake ham should be divided between the two uh, players A and B. Um, in uh, the uh, speech of this morning, uh, we saw um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, so, so, so the uh, solutions uh, Pascal and Fermat gave to this problem. Uh, Huygens uh, didn't, uh, didn't read their works. Uh, he traveled in France in 1655, but he didn't have the possibility to meet neither Pascal nor Fermat be, uh, because uh, the first one uh, had already uh, retired in Port Royal, while the second one uh, had re retired in the countryside. Uh, but during his stay in Paris, he had the possibility to, um, to meet people who were in touch uh, with uh, the two French uh, the two French, uh, ma the two French uh, ma uh, mathematicians. So uh, he learned about the topics um, they, uh, they, the, they discussed in their correspondence. And one year later, when he came back home, he wrote a treatise in Dutch, with, which was uh, published in 1657 by Van Schutten in Latin. Uh, the name of this treatise is the Ratiocinis in Ludo Ale. Uh, the uh, Dutch version of the treatise appeared one year, a, one year later in 1658, and uh, two other translation in English of the treatise appeared in 1692 and 1714. Mm. The starting point of Huygens' treatise it is the definition of expectation, which is given by the author in the introduction of his work. Uh, he says, I take as fundamental for such games that the chance or expectation to gain something is worth so much that, if one had it, one could again get the same chance in a fair game. Suppose, for example, that somebody has three shillings in his one hand and seven in the other, and that I'm asked to choose between them. This is so much worth for me as if I had five shillings for certain. Because if I have five shillings, I can establish a fair game in which I have an equal and even chance of getting three or seven shillings. Um, according to this definition of expectation, the uh, expectation of a player A in a game G can be uh, quantified through building an equivalent game G star, uh, which has two properties. The first one is that G star is fair. Um, actually, Eugens doesn't give a definition of what um, uh, a game uh, of what means that uh, a game is fair. Uh, but I suppose, uh, reading the treatise, that he wants to say that no player has advantage on the other. Um, so, uh, for example, he doesn't have more probability than another player of winning the game. The second condition uh, in G-star is that G-star is such that the possible outcomes for A in G-star are exactly the same as in G. 
um, according uh, to this, this definition of expectation, A's expectation corresponds to the money she has to bet if she wants to take part in G-Star. Um, in the treatise, uh, Huygens assumes that the expectation is equivalent to the fair am amount of money A is willing to accept not to continue the game, and the money another person has to pay to A if he wants to take her place in the game. So, as you can see, uh, the notion of expectation is modeled on the problem of points, which uh, will be uh, de uh, solved uh, by Eugens in the first part of his treatise. Um, the uh, first two uh, re results of his treatise are, are these two. Um, in these two first pro propositions of the uh, treatise, uh, he quantifies the expectation uh, of a player uh, when um, there are two possible outcomes uh, or three possible outcomes who are, uh, that are assumed to be uh, equally probable. But um, as an example of Huygens uh, approach, I decided to talk about uh, pro proposition three. Um, the problem uh, which is stated in proposition three is this. If the number of cases of getting A is P and the number of cases of getting B is Q, assuming that all the cases are equally possible, my expectation will then be worth this. Um, in the demonstration of, of proposition three, Huygens imagines a game G star where a player A faces P plus Q minus one other players. Uh, when, with P minus one of them, A individually makes the agreement that if A wins, he will pay A. If he loses instead, he will receive A. With the last Q players, however, he individually makes the same agreement, but substituting A with B. Um, if X is the money paid by each player to take part in G star, there are three possible outcomes. The first one is that one of the P minus one players with which A made the first agreement wins. In this case, A receives A. Mm. The second one is that one of the Q players with which A made the second agreement wins. In this case, A receives B. The last one is that A wins, so he wins the wall stake, uh, Px plus, minus, uh, plus a Qx, but he has to pay to the other players this. The last passage of Huygens' demonstration of Proposition 3 is that putting A equal to A's gain, so uh, the wall stake minus this, um, in this third case, Huygens obtains the result stated above. Um, this um, last passage is due uh, to the fact that um, there were uh, two, um, two properties which uh, um, the uh, equivalent game G star had to, re to respect. The second one was that G star is such that the possible outcomes for A in G star are exactly the same as in G. So this last passage is due to this, uh, to this property that G star has to respect. Well, um, in the first part of the treatise, uh, uh, thanks to uh, these uh, propositions he has demonstrated, um, Huygens uh, gives the general solution for the problem of points. Um, here, I, um, I did decided to put the solution only for the version of the problem of points I gave in the first slide. So, uh, Huygens says that um, assuming that Well, um, 
assuming that uh, A has already won um, two rounds and B uh, only one, there are two possible outcomes for A in the next round. Either A wins, so he wins the stake M, or B wins, and so both A and B have the same expectation to win, which is for, for, uh, for, for, for proposition one, one of M. Uh, applying the same uh, re result to these two cases, so uh, the case in which uh, A wins the next round and the case in which um, B wins the next round, his expectation is three uh, quarters M. So by the definition of expectation, he must receive three quarters of the stake. Well, this is the first part of uh, Huygens' treatise. Um, in the second part of the treatise, uh, Huygens um, analyzes the dice game. And the main topics of this part of the treatise are, uh, first of all, the solution of the combinatorial problem. That is to say, um, Huygens quantifies the number of cases connected with a, cert with a certain throw in the dice game. Um, this uh, problem may seem for us uh, simple to solve, but actually at that time it was not so. Uh, in fact, only, uh, there's only a treatise by, uh, Gal by uh, G uh, G uh, Galilei in which this combinatorial problem is solved correctly. The second topic is the uh, evaluation of a, the expectation of a certain outcome in connection with the number of throws. An example is given by a pro Proposition 11, um, in which um, Huygens faces the problem to find how many throws one should take to throw two sixes with two dice. So mm, the problem is uh, to um, establish uh, the number of throws um, which um, let uh, a player A have an advantage on the, his opponent. The um, third uh, topic of this uh, second part of the treatise is the analysis of the game of a game with what I called cyclic expectations. This uh, game is analyzed in Proposition 4, 4, 14. Um, if the problem is, if I and another person play alternately with two dice on this condition that I win if I throw seven, but he wins if he throws six first, and if I concede to him the first throw, what is the ratio of my chance to is? Mm. This game is interesting be, because, theoretically um, speaking, um, this game could be never ending. It is possible, in fact, uh, that um, neither my opponent nor I will throw uh, the uh, outcome that uh, will give uh, that will give uh, us the victory. Uh, but um, Huygens um, avoids this, uh, this, di the, this difficulty, um, assuming that uh, even if the, um, the uh, game could be never ending, the uh, expectations uh, of the uh, two players exist. Um, he, uh, he distinguishes two expectations. The one I have when the game starts and it's up to my opponent to throw, say X, and uh, the one I have when it's up to me to throw, say Y. Um, every time my opponent fails, I get Y. Um, instead, every time I fail, I come back to the starting point and my expectation is X. Uh, thanks to uh, thanks to uh, pro, pro proposition three, uh, Huygens de derives that X is worth this and Y is worth this. 
Um, so, uh, solving the simple linear system, uh, Huygens uh, finds that x is worth this, so he can conclude that the proportion of my chance to his chance is as 31 to, to uh, 30. Um, then, this is the last uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, pro proposition Huygens demonstrates in uh, his treatise. But at the end of the treatise, uh, there are uh, five problems which are left as exercises for the reader. Um, now, I would like ju uh, to say just a few words on these uh, five problems. Um, on the history of these five problems. In 1656, Huygens sent his manuscript to Fermat and Pascal. They both read and appreciated Huygens' work. Um, they also sent him uh, three problems to solve, uh, which, which became the first, the third, and the fifth of the exercises at the end of the treatise. Um, in his treatise, Huygens um, gives the uh, solution for these um, three problems, but without showing the method he used to derive them. Um, he also had did two, two other uh, problems, but he left them without so solution. These two problems are uh, problem, problem two and problem four. Um, I did, did decided to talk uh, about uh, problem two, in which there is this game. Um, three players, A, B, and C, uh, have 12 chips, and um, eight of these chips are black, um, four of these chips, however, are white. Uh, a, B, and C, play on the condition that uh, the first blindfolded player to draw a white chip wins, and uh, they also play on the condition that A draw first, B next, and then C, and so on. The question of this problem is um, to find the ratios of the chances to each other. Well, this problem uh, is interesting from an historical point of view, uh, be, uh, because in this statement there is an ambiguity uh, that was not caught uh, by Huygens. Um, the uh, problem is that it is not clear um, the general condition in which uh, the uh, three players play this game. And for uh, example, it is not clear um, if uh, they draw their chip and put it back in the box, or they don't put, don't, uh, they uh, throw, uh, draw the chip, but they don't put back in the box. Um, it is interesting, the, uh, this fact is interesting be, uh, because in a correspondence with a man called uh, Hood, um, um, that, uh, who uh, would then be, uh, become the major of Amsterdam, um, Huygens and Hood uh, didn't agree on the, uh, the uh, solution of this problem be, uh, because they uh, they uh, take into account different conditions in which this play is played, uh, but uh, they, uh, they uh, didn't understand that the reason why their uh, solutions were different was that uh, there was this ambiguity in the problem. Um, the first one uh, who uh, understood uh, who caught this ambiguity was Jacob Bernoulli in his Arts, Arts Cognitandi, uh, which was published uh, in um, 1614. Uh, in the first part of this uh, treatise, um, Heuge, uh, sorry, uh, Jacob Bernoulli uh, wrote a detailed commentary to Huygens' treatise. Um, in this part, uh, he uh, comments every single uh, re result uh, stated by um, 
by Huygens, and he also discusses the uh, five problems at the end of, um, of uh, Huygens' treatise. And as uh, I said be before, uh, Bernoulli is the first one who, um, who caught the ambiguity in problem two. Um, he, uh, an, another interesting aspect of uh, Bernoulli's treatise, uh, Bernoulli's commentary on Huygens' treatise, is that he discusses the solution of the five problems through two different methods. The first one, which is, uh, uh, Bernoulli says, um, the method of the uh, author, that is to say, Huygens' method. Um, he imagine, uh, he imagines uh, that Huygens would have used this method to solve the five problems. And the second one um, is a synthetic method, um, and it was invented by uh, the author of the Ars Cognitandi. Um, so uh, Ber Ber Bernoulli distinguished uh, four conditions uh, under which uh, the game in problem two uh, could be uh, played. The first one is that A, B, and C draw from the same box. The second one is that the three players draw from three different boxes. The third one is that uh, the players draw a chip and put it back in the box. And the fourth one is that the player draw a chip and don't put, back, put it back in the box. Um, I think that um, the most uh, interesting analysis Bernoulli uh, makes is the analysis of um, this game under condition three. Um, it is due, uh, I think, to the fact that um, if this game is played under this, uh, this con condition, as the game in Proposition 14 we saw uh, be, be before, theoretically speaking, the, the uh, three players, um, Mm, the, actually, the game could be never ending because the um, three players may uh, never draw uh, a white chip. Um, the uh, interesting fact is that uh, Bernoulli finds a different method uh, to solve uh, this problem, um, and uh, um, with uh, its analysis of the game in proposition for. 14, I uh, wanted to conclude my uh, speech. Um, we, uh, I, um, uh, we saw uh, that um, in, uh, his, in, uh, in his de demonstration of uh, the, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, proposition, um, Huygens assumed that um, the expectation of the two players uh, um, it, 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 it exists, and he uh, calculates he, it through the method we saw be, before. Uh, Ber Bernoulli, uh, however, um, in the note uh, to uh, this uh, problem, um, instead of two players, uh, imagines a, a list, an infinite list of players who can draw only once. The player in an even place win if they draw seven. The players in an odd place instead win if they draw six. Let me be the cases for six and see the cases against. Let then uh, E be the cases for seven and C the cases against it. Let then A be uh, the number of all the possible cases. Um, Bernoulli shows that the probability of winning uh, for a player in uh, the place 2n plus 1 is, um, is this. And the probability of winning for a player in the place 2n is, uh, is this. So, um, summing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, prob probability of the players in even places and that of players in hot places, he obtains two geometric series of common ratio, this, 
uh, and this is due to the fact that uh, the game could be never ending, so E has to sum uh, all the, uh, the, uh, the uh, probabilities of all the infinite players in the list. Um, these uh, the, uh, two um, ge geometric series correspond uh, to, the, uh, to the probability of the uh, two uh, players in this game. And so mm, that's all. I just wanted to point out the fact um, that um, through uh, this method, um, Ber 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 Bernoulli goes uh, beyond uh, Huygens' one be, uh, be, because he doesn't assume that uh, the expectation exists, but uh, uh, found a method uh, um, to show that this expectation exists and that it has a certain value which corresponds, of course, with uh, the one uh, Huygens uh, found. Uh, thank you. Thanks very much, Mirko. Are there questions? Comments? Criticisms? It's been a long day. So you can read that off faces. I forced one, you see? A few minutes, and mine is um, uh, absolutely a purely historical curiosity, which is um, we have um, some treatise about plays, and in particular um, this kind of, of, of game um, already in Cardano. Then, is there any tradition, and uh, do these authors know um, Cardano and that kind of tradition? that you know of, obviously. It's a purely historical curiosity, so thanks. Well, um, actually, I'm not sure if, ah, yes. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if um, they know uh, these uh, treaties, but I think uh, they don't know uh, Cardano's treaties. Um, an interesting aspect is that uh, in Cardano's treaties uh, there is not the, uh, the uh, proper solution of the combinatorial problem uh, I, um, we saw, uh, in, we saw B, B, B4. Uh, actually, I think uh, that um, um, these uh, Huygens treaties um, is uh, strictly connected with uh, the war uh, with uh, Pascal and Fermat's works. Um, so, and I, I actually I think they, that they didn't know anything about the history of these uh, kind of problems. More, than, I, I think so, but I'm not sure. <laughs> That, um, well, uh, do I have to repeat? So uh, it's also quite interesting um, from another aspect, which isn't much about um, games, but um, more about combinatorics. And th this is an historical integration. That uh, at this point, combinatorics um, pass into mathematics uh, where, when they have been in the Western tradition mostly about uh, a whole uh, other kind of things. Um, I mean, uh, from Lull to the Renaissance tradition, there is not a, a mathematical aspect in, in combinatorics up until the 16th, 17th century. While in the medieval Arabic tradition, combinatorics is, is purely mathematical. So uh, it, 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 it is quite interest, interesting to, to see this kind of application here, because it's a quite a novelty in the Western tradition, as far as I know about it. So thank you. Very interesting talk. I thought there was the answer to your question. No. I thought there was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, just. Uh, no. Uh, 
There's I, nothing you want to say. No, uh, no, actually. Um, there was no question, in fact. Uh, in fact, uh, it was. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Very good. I think that's a perfect note to. <laughs>